hello ladies and gentlemen my name is destiny and welcome back to my channel so in today's video we're going to go ahead and start working with the login authentication and in this one users are going to be able to log in using their email address and their password so you want to see more videos like this to make sure to drop a like consider subscribing as it really mean the world to me so let's go ahead and get started <laughs> Now, the first thing I'm going to do as usual is go ahead and open up my comment prompt over here. And from now on, I want to be using the integrated terminal. And for that, we wouldn't be using this any longer. I'm just going to go ahead and close it off. If you are using Visual Studio Code, then you'd want to use the integrated terminal, but it's not compulsory. You could use the, the comment prompt. You could use the PowerShell or Git CMD. This is it over here. It's totally up to you. They all do the same thing, but just for the sake of being fast and actually keeping my workspace clean i want to use the integrated terminal so just come over here to terminal and hit new terminal or if you're on a window hit command backtick or tilde and that should open up and i don't know for max but i think that should be something like command backtick if you're on a window it should be control backtick okay so when that's done um, the next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and open up our views.py and that's where we're going to be creating a simple view that's going to help us log our users in. Okay, so from here, what do you think we're going to be doing? We should just write a very simple logic that's going to help us do that. And in order to get started, I'm just going to define a function and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to call this login view. Now, as you all know, you could call this whatever you want from... You could call this login or you could just call this login auth. It's totally up to you. I don't want to um, use the camo case um, formatting. I just want to stick with login view just like this. Login view. And um, I want to make sure that this is the view over here. I'm just going to copy that. <clears throat> and I'm going to pass in requests. Okay, so we're passing request. And that's pretty much what we need. So there's a couple of things that we're going to be checking for. Firstly, I want to check. If a user is already logged in, I don't want to, I don't want them to be able to access the login page again. Hopefully you understand. And how to do that is quite easy. I'm just gonna say if request.user.is authenticated. So in Django, this is how we actually check if a user is actually logged in with with a simple command request.user.isauthenticated is gonna get the logged in user. So we simply checked if the user is logged in. Now what do we wanna do? We wanna go ahead and just redirect them to the homepage, right? So I'm gonna say return, redirect, and um, I'm gonna open up my urls.py, the one for the core, and uh, I wanna see what I call the index, okay? That's it, as you can see, I call that index. So I'm just gonna get back to the view over here and I'm gonna say redirect to core index, okay? So that's one step done. Now the, net, the other step is to go ahead and log a user in. So how do we log a user in? Firstly, we want to check if the request dot method is equal to post. So if the request dot method that they're going to be using, like the forms method is equal to post, then that's when we want to go ahead and do something cool. Now, what do we want to do? Remember that a user have actually registered on our website before they're going to be trying to log in, right? So what does that tell you? that should actually give you a hint that a user's information are already stored in the database on our platform right so all we need to do is write a simple query that's gonna grab whatever is it that the user is passing into the form as their email and password that they want to use to log in we're gonna grab that and we're gonna see if any detail like that actually matches anything that we've got on our database so if there is anything like that on our database then we're gonna go ahead and tell them and give like a success message something like you logged in successfully else we're gonna say something like user does not exist then if it's actually a password error let's say the, the user actually exists but the password isn't the same then we're going to say something like password doesn't match so i want to explain that so you guys will understand what's going on as we start coding now so i said if request.method is equal to post that's it so firstly i want to grab the email and in order to grab the email i'm simply going to say request.post.get so request 
dot post dot get is just the same thing as um when we work with django forms we do something like form should be equal to login form then we say something like a request dot post so remember what we did over here if you take a close look that's what we did over here request dot post so this is another way of doing it if you don't want to use this form over here you could just simply do it this way now what we if you are doing it this way that means you've created a form in the forms.py which might be the user register form remember we created that from the last video but this time around we don't want to create another form i just want to show you guys different ways of doing different things here so that's why the first one i worked with form but this one we're going to be working with plain input fields we are not going to be working with django forms so in order to grab the email that the user is going to type in to the input field what you simply need to do is email you could call this whatever you want but i just want to stick with the name that we've got in our database which is email and i'm going to say email should be equal to request.post dot get so get is the one that's going to get whatever they typed in and the name of the input field is email okay so over here um i'm just going to open this one up and i want to show you guys something so in here there's going to be an input field right now there's going to be a name so whatever is in this name name email is simply what you want to pass in in here okay so that's what it's going to get so let's say in this name what we've got um is some like bananas then obviously you know that's what we're going to pass in in there is bananas okay so hopefully you guys understand what's going on so when all this is done i think that should be it. Now, what else do we want to grab? We also want to grab the password that they're going to be typing into the input field, right? So the password that they're going to be typing into the input field, that's what we need. Now, we're going to do it exactly the same way. We did request.post.get. I'm going to say request.post.get. And what do we want to grab? We want to grab the password, okay? Password. So um, that's pretty much what you want to do now I'm gonna go ahead and write a simple try catch take note if you don't want to do this in a try catch it's totally up to you but I highly recommend you put this in a try catch error to be able to um, filter whatever error that you're gonna be getting and if there's actually an error you don't want to break your program but you just want to return whatever error is it that you are returning so if you are totally new to django i don't want you to freak out with try catch because i actually know how it feels when i started off with django i was like oh come on what is try catch someone writes try over here then they come down here and um they, they, they write except like what what does this do like i was really really confused but i don't want you to freak out and one more thing that i wouldn't want you to mistake try catch for is conditional statement if else no they are not the same thing they do totally different things okay so let me go ahead and explain what try catch does now firstly i'm going to be starting with conditional statements so you guys understand so conditional statements goes like this if if um it's raining right if it's raining then what's gonna happen bring the umbrella right so that's it bring umbrella let me just bring umb i'm just gonna leave it that way so this is what conditional statement is now this is not the same thing as try catch now what you could put in try catch is try if it's raining so we could firstly try if it's raining now we tried if it's raining but what if it's not raining take note it's not conditional statement what if it's not raining then we might say something like it's not raining over here it's not raining maybe instead of bringing an umbrella or whatever we check if it's raining if it's not if it's raining except it's not raining hopefully you guys understand try if it's raining except it's not raining as simple as that so i wouldn't want you guys to confuse all this um confuse try catch with conditional statements and actually i'm gonna be making tutorials that would solely focus um explaining try catch and um hopefully you guys are gonna get it so this is the first thing i want to do i simply want to say user and you could call that whatever you want should be equal to user dot 
objects the all so this one is the one that you can call whatever you want you see this one over here you can call it whatever you want and um firstly i want to go ahead and import something from the the from my user arts but instead of importing it from the user arts, i want to do something that's more cool firstly i want to say from django.conf i'm gonna go ahead and import settings hopefully that's it and one more thing that I want to do is go ahead and define a variable user. You could call that one whatever you want. Should be equal to settings dot. Then I then in the settings dot py I called it auth underscore user underscore model. So let me explain what's happening over here. We imported settings is just a simple um, method that actually helps connect to the settings dot py. Now we created a variable user and the variable user we connected to the user auth model that we created the costume one remember so i'm just going to open up my settings.py hopefully you guys already know what i'm talking about or if for any reason you are still confused that's why i'm coming over here so we connected it to this auth user model which is connected to the user auth dot user so this is what we are looking for and now we successfully brought that in here okay so when that's done i think that's pretty much what we want to do but over here we don't want to get all the users that are in our database no we just want to get one user that their credentials are actually matched are actually matching this one over here that the that the user provided so in that case what we want to do is get so so whenever you want to return all the data that you've got in your database then you want to use all the all method well when you want to return a datum then you want to use get so hopefully you guys understand what's going on now when you want to return a datum that's just one data so we're going to be using get now i want to say get what do we want to get so this one now is totally up to you you could filter by whatever you want you could say um get password should be equal to password or email should be equal to email but i'm going to be sticking with email should be equal to email now what does this mean over here this email this line over here is the one that grabs the email that the user passed in so let's say the user passed in um let's say peanuts peanuts at gmail.com peanuts at gmail.com and let's say they pass in a password that um gets me peanuts something like that okay um is that a spin of peanuts okay so this line over here got the email that they passed in which is peanuts at gmail.com then this line over here the password got the password which just gets me peanuts now what is this line doing over here this email this email field over here is pretty much the one that we have over here so i'm i'm gonna come over to my user auth so i'll show you guys everything that's going on um open up user auth models.py so that email is this one that we've got over here that first email that you can see over here this first email over here is this one now the second email is this one so you guessed the right so what we are saying is try to get an email that's in the database that have a gmail of peanuts at gmail.com so obviously we don't have an email like that so it's gonna throw an error right but we don't want to break our program that's why we are using the accept so if there if there is no user like that then we want to go ahead and throw a warning message and you can actually make that an error message it's totally up to you whatever you want to do so this one is going to be message dot warning and um, we want to warn them or you could throw an error I see it's totally up to you earlier now you could use an F formatted string or you could use a normal string they are totally up to you now you use you should use formatted string whenever you want to call variables in here so let's say you want to say something like email okay okay actually we could say something like that we could say um user with i'm, I'm just say user then with now then over here i'm just gonna pass in email does not exist does not egg exists okay so you could use this variable over here this one over here is pretty much getting this email that they passed in okay hopefully you guys understand then um we whenever you get rid of this f over here they use it that this would down through an error so there definitely needs to be an f so that everything 
works perfectly well okay so this is pretty much the functionality that we need now when all this is also done i'm gonna come over here and i'm gonna say user take notes we're gonna get an error and that error that we're gonna get will be a message error and i'm gonna show you guys what the problem is when we get there okay so um before i go ahead and do the next part i want to import login and authenticate if you haven't done that already make sure you you do it now from django.contrib.art import login and authenticate we did it from the last video and that's what we're going to be using to log users in so the next functionality that i want to add is the functionality that's automatically going to go ahead and log a user in if um there is actually a user with such email okay so over here i'm gonna say user should be equal to then i'm gonna call the authenticate method that we imported and i'm simply gonna pass in request over there and i'm gonna say email should be equal to email so the authenticate method actually have a field that's called email okay so it have a field that's called email and it also have a field that's called password so we say the email should be equal to the email that the user passed in okay and also the password should be equal to the password that the user passed in so the password field that authenticate of god should be equal to the should be equal to the password that the user passed in as simple as that now finally i'm going to go ahead and check for something so i want to say if user is not known so what does this mean? This means that there is actually a user, right? So if user is not known, which means if user is not null, if there is actually a user, then we wanna go ahead and log in whatever user that's trying to log into the account, okay? So I'm gonna say request and I'm gonna pass an user. So the login method, remember we are importing the authenticate and the, and the authenticate and the login method from django.contrib.auth takes in two parameter or arguments one is request which is this that we passed in over here and another one is okay there is a problem there and another one is the user which is this one over here that we used to authenticate the user using their email and password so when this is done now then we could go ahead and maybe re return a message for them we could say message the success and i'm gonna pass in a request and i'm gonna say you logged in you are logged in something like that simple then we want to go ahead and redirect them to somewhere so whenever they log in we want to go ahead and redirect them to the home page now this one is totally up to you you can redirect them to the let's say to their profile to their sign up page it's totally up to you, you could do whatever you want with that so when we return them there now you guys shouldn't forget that we wrote an if statement over here that says if user is not known how about if a user is known what do we want to do so that means there is no user like that in our database right then we want to go ahead and um, show them a message so we're gonna say message dot one in and i'm gonna pass in the request over there and i'm gonna say user does not exist something like that user does not exist user does not exist create an account create an account okay something like that you know you could get more creative and pass in whatever you want in there it's your code play around with it now i think that's gonna be it so um the next thing is just to go ahead and return a template that's gonna render all this code that we've written so just make sure that in this if statement along this line that's where you want to return a template or you're gonna get this error that's gonna say something like the view um login view returned no http response something like that you're gonna get such error if you don't place this in the right place so pass in return redirect and in here i'm gonna pass in request which is the parameter we'll pass into the function and i'm gonna call the name of the this is the name of the template and i'm gonna say user out slash signing dot html hopefully you guys know how all this one works now then i'm gonna pass in context so i'm gonna be passing in context over here that's if i want to create like a context variable that's gonna hold anything for me but for now as you can see it's it's empty which means we we could just go ahead and um leave this over here in the future we might come in here and add something to it it's totally up to us if you have any important thing that we want to do with that then we'll add something if there's nothing that's it so come over to the urls let's create a new url for the view that we just created remember what we called it just called login view right so um this one over here is going to be sign in and this one is going to be sign in okay so now i'm going to go ahead and run my server 
I'm going to exit from the from the bash and I'm going to say Python manage.py run server and we should give this a couple of seconds. You should go ahead and successfully spin up the server for us, which it has already done that. Now, hopefully you guys know that this is what we are working with. Now, I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to come over to the home page and this should be what we have. I'm just going to come over here to the terminal and this is taking a little bit of time to load up let's just wait for that okay it's successfully loaded up now what i want to do is this i'm just going to come over to slash user slash user slash sign up okay so as you can see now this is the sign up page we already worked with this now if we come over to slash sign in which is what we are looking for now it says the it says reverse blah 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 does not exist Okay, I can already see where the error is coming from. So the error is over here. This is supposed to be return render. So what we're trying to render is a template, not to redirect our users to a specific page. So this should work now. Now, all we need to do is just create a template called signin.html and everything should work perfectly well. So I'm just gonna come over here and I'm gonna create a new template signin.html, refresh this. That should be it. Everything is working perfectly well. So now in order to go ahead and log in, what we could do is just grab our templates. So remember I told you guys that we've got this template thing over here. All you need to do is follow the link in the description below and you're gonna get the template and follow along with the tutorial, okay? So where we've got this now, we're gonna be closing a couple of things. I'm gonna look for header, this is it. I'm gonna collapse that. I'm gonna collapse this one and also all until the place that we have the header end remove everything to the top now i'm gonna steal something from the sign up html because i'm a little bit lazy and i don't want to type out all that so i'm just gonna take it from over there from the index or from the sign up and in the sign in i'm just gonna place it at the top okay as simple as that now this is the footer over here i don't need the footer so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna from over here i'm gonna remove everything all the way to the to the bottom now, just over here, I'm going to end block content and block content. So hopefully you guys understand how the end block content and the block content works now. And hopefully that doesn't confuse you guys any longer. But if for any reason it still confuses you guys, you guys should make sure to um, drop a comment in comment section and I'll be there to help you out. Okay. So, um, that's it as you can see the login is showing up perfectly well now what i want to do is simply open this up and i'm going to say Control shift p and i'm going to hit the auto django thing so one more time if we refresh this as you can see our image is showing up perfectly well so now let's go ahead and fix up all those fields so that we're going to be able to log in successfully now firstly in the form you want to give this a method of post remember when we checked for that in the views.py over here when we say if request that method is post remember that so i'm going to come over to i'm going to come over here and and as you all know when we work the register we passed in a csrf underscore token and that is pretty much to prevent cross-site forgery now what that does is this i've explained it before but i'm just going to explain it again if you hit ctrl u on your keyboard and open up the source code and um, you look for the method post I'm going to look for method post. What do you notice? There is a, a, a hidden input field over here that has a value of this long string. Now, what do you think is going to happen whenever we refresh this? As you can see, it changes a new CSRF token each time. And this is pretty much to prevent cross site forgery. And if Django doesn't get that CSRF token, it's going to throw a 404 error. Okay? Or rather, a 403 error, something of that nature. So that's pretty much what we want to do, guys. Now, over here for the name, make sure that an email is passed in there or you're going to have a problem and make sure this is going to be required. And also for the name, for the password, make sure it's password. And this password is pretty much because over here, what we are getting is password. And for the email, what we are getting is email. So you want to make sure that this one is correct. And also this should be required. Now for the security code, I don't think we need any security code for now, although we're gonna be implementing that in the future. So that's why I'm just gonna comment that out for now and not totally delete it. So when that's done, um, I think that's pretty much what we wanna do. Make sure that the type of the button is submit. And um, yeah, that should be it. Let's come over here and refresh one more time. And let's try logging in over here. I'm just gonna fill, it, fill this in and I'm gonna log in. So right now it's not gonna show any 
message remember all the messages that we were creating that would actually check if um if a user is act that actually exists then it's going to log you in else it's going to say something like user doesn't exist and all that messages that we're creating now nothing is going to show up over here and I actually purposely want to push that video over to the next one which is a lot in Django so I'm going to be showing you guys how to work with a lot and all its cool features so I don't want to do it over here but I just want you guys to know that that was actually showing up but there is no a lot to actually display the message but if I try logging in with my legit dexfix at gmail.com and my password and i hit login what do you think is going to happen it successfully logs me in okay then as you can see it redirects me to the dashboard so what do you guys think is going to happen if i want to come over to slash user slash sign in again what do you notice it redirects me back to the home page and that's because we are already logged in okay now to even spice things up a little bit i'm just going to add a simple message over here um, when a user try accessing the the login page whenever they are already logged in I'm just gonna warn them and say something like hey you are already logged in okay I'm gonna say hey you are already logged in okay so um I think that's gonna be it for this video hopefully you guys enjoy the video and um, actually learn something new in the next one as you can see over here we're gonna go ahead and start working with the logout system that one is gonna be pretty short and fun because yeah it's gonna be really short because it's um, really really easy to implement then after that we're gonna work with a cool alert in Django then we're gonna go ahead and start working with some more complex and advanced cool things okay so that's gonna be it for this video make sure to drop a like consider subscribing as it really mean the world to me turn on the bell notification so you don't miss any episodes from this one and also you want to get the templates check out the links in the description below that should point you to the right direction of getting the templates on to the next one where we're gonna go ahead and start creating the logout system i'd love peace out